Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into the Profitable Musician Show. Hey, this is Brie Noble, and I am excited to be here today with Leo Saunders of Toon River. Leo is a singer-songwriter, and he started an awesome service called Toon River. And so before we get into Toon River, which I know you guys are going to be super excited about as singer-songwriters, because this is an opportunity for you guys to get involved and create another income stream, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. I want to let Leo tell you a little bit about his background as a singer-songwriter and then a little segue into why he started Toon River. Sure. Um, Hi. Hi. Hi, Bree. Thanks for having us on. Um, it's great to have the opportunity to reach uh, out into your community and, and to um, uh, connect with more artists. Um, so my background is, um, oh gosh, I, I've been in music. I was, in a, I was in a band in the 90s, actually back in the 90s on the Camden circuit called Lemonade Hand Grenade. It was a bit of an indie rock band. Um, we, we did okay. We did a lot of self-finance stuff. Um, and then later I went back into art and design college. Uh, from there, I got headhunted into design agencies, worked with design agencies and worked with corporate companies. Um, and then eventually a couple of years ago in 2018, I launched uh, TuneRiver.com um, as a way to... Um, share the joy and delight of personalized songs for people as gifts, but also to be able to support artists because throughout um, the previous decades, I've uh, always kept doing music and kept playing music and experienced and met so many other songwriters that put their heart and soul into what they were creating um, only for it to end up on, you know, a variety of streaming services, not actually get paid for it. I mean, you get paid from a marketing perspective on tra- streaming services, but not so much for um, the actual product. So uh, Tune River is a great way for artists to be able to uh, generate some extra income from their songs. Yeah, what I love about this is it allows artists to be able to monetize music they've already created. And I'll let you explain how that works in a minute. Um, but I wanted to go back to, you know, why you created it and that, you know, artists aren't making as much on streaming as they used to on, say, you know, getting downloads or selling CDs. And obviously you came up with this before the pandemic happened. But what have you seen since the pandemic as far as it, you know, really being like the perfect outlet in the situation we're in right now. Right. Yeah. I I mean, since the pandemic, um, it's been just wonderful to be able to support the artists that are on board uh, with that extra income stream. Um, Like many of the artists, well, I'd say all of the artists that are are on board with TuneRiver.com, um, I was, I'm a gigging musician, you know, uh, every weekend I would be out there playing gigs and that's, that would be a big part of my income stream. And so, um, you know, I know from personal, complete personal perspective, how that has affected, um, the income of artists and musicians. Also, um, from a confidence perspective, I mean, I, I'm not sure how it, how this has been translated in, in the US, but particularly over here, we, we had a period of time where the government were 
advertising for artists and people in the creative communities to retrain um, because they were labeled as non-viable. It was a non-viable career. Um, and I always challenged that because there are, there are ways for artists to continue to make money um, without gigging. And the only reason that the, uh, the artists were in that situation where they were not viable is because they were complying with the rules and regulations about, um, yeah, about not uh, being out there and entertaining. So, um, so yes, uh, the pandemic has, has accentuated the, um, the possibilities, shall we say, for Tune River for supporting artists. That's crazy that your government was basically telling artists that they were non-viable, like uh, typical governments, like whether it's UK or US or anybody else, they tend to be so like small minded and so like one one note, you know, they're, they're not seeing all the possibilities that are out there. And that's one of the big things I want to do with this podcast is to show how many different streams of income there are for musicians and that's one reason that I have you on right now, because, gosh, I mean, just to have a government tell you that you are non-viable and try to get you to retrain is just so disempowering. <laughs> so that's like, that's terrible for me to hear. Um, mm. But I mean, our government wasn't any better, you know, in the beginning, it's like, oh, we'll give you support, you know, a uh, paycheck protection program and all that stuff, but only for people that work as traditional employees. We completely forgot about all the entire gig economy and everybody that's 1099. And I was just so disheartened by that because it's like, this is a huge part of the economy, um, gigging, gigging people of all kinds of kinds of you know areas of work and they just come they're complete afterthought <laughs> of the government so um i'm so glad there's people out there like you that are trying to build up artists and say hey this is valuable and you should be paid for what you do and so i want you to just kind of explain a little bit about what tune what tune river is i know you mentioned that it mm -hmm. was for personalized songs but kind of how how does the process work mm. yes yeah, so, i mean this this does dovetail into that whole kind of conundrum um, about uh, careers. And I mean, I imagine, a, well, I, we all know that a lot of uh, businesses were affected by the pandemic and, and uh, the creative industries being just one of them. Um, and really the, the effort should be uh, within Digi you know, how can you digitalize? How can you digitize your business? How can you present yourself online and um, offer online services, online products to be able to make an income? Um, and so obviously tunerive.com, it is a digital product. Um, we are looking in, in the future for more tangible products, but it's a digital product. product. So when someone comes to tunerever.com, um, they, uh, it, it's a very simple process. They, they select who the song is for, what the occasion is, and all the relevant songs populate under their choices. Um, so, and they can hear clips of all the songs. Um, when they've chosen a song that they like the sound of, um, then they, um, go into a process of ordering that song by putting in the personal comments. Um, and then the artist uh, will receive the order. Um, they will take their song and then personalize the areas of the content. It's usually it's up to about 40%. Sometimes it's not as much depending on the amount of content we receive from the customer. Um, but they'll adjust parts of the song to make it personal for that personal for that person, <laughs> for the customer receiving the song, um, and there oh, it's there's such beauty in it. I I, uh, I just really it touches my heart um, each day uh, when we hear comments back from customers um, of the positive way that we're impacting people's lives, and um, 
And obviously that's great for the artist as well, because not only are they getting paid, um, they are also getting the response from the customer, hearing back how, how wonderful it is or quite often how it made them cry. You know, uh, I mean, we're dealing, in, we're dealing in happy tears most of the time. Mm, that is so that is so awesome, as, especially as musicians, to be able to know that your song is affecting people, is playing a role in their life that is, you know, really moving and meaningful for them. And you as a musician, musician getting to experience that directly with the person, you know, versus we put our music out there on Spotify and, you know, maybe people are listening, maybe they're enjoying it, but we don't know because a lot of times they're not like connected with us on social or email they're not letting us know so there's that great feedback for the artist and then of course the people that are buying it are also experiencing the awesome you know experience with having this artist like sing their information (laughs) into the song like that's such a cool connection between and you probably making a fan for life as the artist when that person now has your song as a big part of their their life and their experience. So I love that. It kind of reminds me of like the super old days of when people were, you know, maybe making cassettes and selling them out of the back of their car or something. And then, you know, they would start taking like special requests and putting people's name into it. And that, you know, it's kind of like, this is a digital version of that. And, you know, back then you, maybe you were selling your cassette for $5 and then you were personalizing it and it was 20 bucks, but it was so cool to have this person, you know, have your name and your information in the song. So I I love that idea and Mm. that you've come up with a digital way to do it. And when I think back, gosh, I used, I was involved in something like this about 10 years ago, I'd say, I mean, way before it's time. Right. But it just, the world wasn't ready for it. I can't even remember the name of it, but you know, it was all done by email. Like it wasn't as, mm. as streamlined as what you have and it didn't really catch on, but it was fun to do it, especially cause I had some love songs and it worked really well with that. So I love mm. that you have set up a system. So it's really easy for the artist. It's really easy for the people that's ordering it. So can you just give people kind of a, like a snapshot of, what happens when somebody places an order then what Mm -hmm. happens on the artist side since we've mostly got artists listening yes uh so it's very straightforward from from the artist side um they get an email um they also get a text from me um which i will always text them when relevant to their time zone obviously you know if there's someone in america and it's early morning in the UK, I'm going to wait until later in the day, and likewise the other way around. Um, and uh, they just, I just asked them to text me back, uh, just because I'm one of those people, if, it, if I haven't had that message back, my mind's just thinking, have they got it, have they got mm-hmm. it, have they got it? So that's a, that's a responsibility from the artist side to just get back to me and say, hey, I'm on it. Um, then they have... Um, I mean, the orders we turn around within 72 hours. So that's one of the commitments from the artist side is to be, to have a setup, a home setup, home recording setup, or access to a recording studio where they can, they can achieve that uh, delivery uh, for the customer, that 72 hour delivery. I do actually ask the artist to um, get back to me within 48 hours, just to make sure, you know, if there's any, kinks that we need to iron out at the end of the process or um i mean that hardly ever happens but um yeah so it's a, it's a quick turnaround they basically need to record the vocal part um the vocal overdubs send me an mp3 and that's it from their side um and we are done um there's a there's a bit of automation in, involved from the uh, the ordering process. For example, the name they provide usually gets automated within the lyric sheet that the customer receives. Um, but there's a, still a bit of work, you know, from on the back end from the web for loading things up and making sure everything's perfect. Hence, me asking for the 
the 48 hour turnaround from the artist. Well, that sounds like such an easy process. And I love that you text because yeah, sometimes you're not reading your email, you're out, you know, but you know, okay, I'm on this, I can get it mm. done. And yeah. if you've got a home studio, it's super easy. It probably takes you 15 minutes, you know, because you've, you've already got the song like set up in your setup and you just go in and like, you know, the spots that you need to change and it mm. sounds super easy and you do get a decent amount of money for this, right? You want to let them know like what do artists make from this? Mm. Oh, um, you drink in your just, water, just, sorry. Just, <laughs> a, no, just a, just a, uh, just to respond to it, it's not, it doesn't take 15 minutes. It would be lovely if it took 15 minutes. Oh. But um, it, it usually, you know, recently I, I put the prices up because I found the artists were spending more time, a lot mm. more time. I was originally, uh, aiming for about an hour to turn around the, you know, the rewrites, the overdub and get it back. But I would find that, you know, because I spend time connecting with each of the artists and, and, you know, finding out how it's going for them, what we can do to help them. And when uh, we revisited this at the start of the year, I found out they were spending more time on it because it was so important for them to deliver the highest quality product um, that we could, that they could manage, that we could manage, because these are their babies going out into mm -hmm. the world, you know, personal babies, personalized babies. So they spend their time on their craft. They make sure it's, you know, it's mixed properly and that it's going out uh, a real high quality. Um, so in fact, we did put our prices up. Um, to reflect that, to support the artists. Um, and so uh, the personalized songs at the moment in the US, they retail for $197. And in the UK, that equates to 147 pounds. Um, and for Europe, 167 euros. That's awesome. And what percentage does the artist receive? The artist received 60%. Uh, this is another thing that we altered recently. As we put the prices up, we gave them the extra percentage mm. um, because, you know, it's a big part of what I'm doing is, is to support that artist. Uh, it's really important to me. And I think I would like to think it's important to our customers as well um, because, when people buy gifts these days, there's there's this whole term out there called, um, what is it, responsible giving. Mm. Um, we think we have so much choice these days. And sometimes we buy, well, quite often we buy with our values and our beliefs. And um, I want music lovers to really know that they are supporting artists. Um, and so when they get their final confirmation email, they get, you know, they get that personal message from me saying, thank you for supporting artists. And here's the artist's information for you to check out. So you, it, just in case you want to follow them and um, be part of their community. I love that. I mean, it's almost like, you know, adopting an artist or being a patron, you know, kind of the, the whole reason behind Patreon, right? To, to really be a part of keeping that artist being able to make more art, you know? And I think that that is an important, important part of the price of that gift, right? Like they could get them a really nice gift for less than that, mm. but that's not the point. The point is we're supporting this artist. We're also getting an amazing gift. And then the person that we're giving it to also knows that that gift is supporting the artist. So I think that's a really good point. And I'm, I know it is such a, such a big mission for you to support artists. And what I also love is that like you're, this is all, you know, on what I love to say, like all boats rise with the tide, right? And so when you get artists on board with this, part of the, the mission is we're all going to help support Toon River by getting the word out. So more of the artists on Toon River are going to be making more money, right? So how do you kind of get behind that with the artist to get the word out. Of course, we're doing that right now, but you know, the artists yeah. on their end. 
Right. Yes. So we we actually have a, a WhatsApp group that like a Chibnover artist WhatsApp group, and um, the that's taken a life on it, of its own because what I find is that the and I encourage this as well is that the artist might have a release coming out like a new video or something that they want the artist to get behind and they share that and we all jump on it and share it. I mean, we live in this kind of digitalized algorithm world that, um, you you know, you need that community aspect behind things to be able to, you know, do a proper launch. Um, And so, yeah, that, that's a great, great aspect of it. Uh, The other thing that I find as well is that, um, when we have uh, meetings, when we all get together, um, there they will share tips, you know, and I will be learning stuff all the time. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I, um, you know, I'm thinking of back to the early days. I was lear- I learned about this uh, sum up device where you could uh, take payments, like payments, card payments, when you're at gigs. You know, so you can sell CDs, you can get tips. Um, with just people, you know, tapping their card on the device and, and away you go. And that, that came through the artists. And um, something recently, you know, obviously the live streaming, um, we've all been sharing tips and tricks on how to, how to do that um, in the most effective way. Um, there's constantly sharing ideas with each other. Um, and that's... Um, That's the great thing about musicians, particularly I found in the last five years, um, I would say years ago, it used to be, used to be kind of quite competitive, like healthy competition, but quite competitive. And a little bit like people were slightly against each other. I think in the last five years, what I've noticed from a musician um, perspective is that there's this tribe mentality that we're all in this together and musicians do tend to be so helpful um, because they have to work so hard. Um, So why not help out your brothers and sisters? Absolutely. That is a huge value of mine and a huge reason for my podcast. So I'm so glad that you're creating that kind of community with Toon River. So artists that are watching and are listening right now, I know you're probably super excited to get involved with Toon River. And we have a special code that we want you to um, let people know that you heard about it from us. Uh, Our code is nobility after my name, noble. So nobility. And all you need to do is email Leo. If you want to get involved, Leo at toonriver.com, L-E-O at toonriver.com. And he'll get you, you know, he'll make sure that you've got what you need to be able to be a Tune River artist as far as your setup and being able to produce, you know, the right songs and, and have the songs that are going to work for the personalized songs that they do there. So there's a little vetting involved, of course, because that's how it is with any great service. So if you just email Leo, let them know, let him know that you heard about it here, use the code nobility and you'll be on your way to possibly being a Toon River artist. And for if anyone here wants to buy a gift for someone on Toon River, I highly recommend it. All you have to do is go to toonriver.com and everything is right there. You can check out the different songs that you can use to personalize and all the artists that are involved. And I know that more artists are gonna be getting on board. I especially want to encourage female artists. Um, you know, I'm a big champion for female artists and you've got some great female artists on there, but we need more. So yes, contact yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a, a great bunch of female artists, but um, we're, we are looking for more. So yes, please do get in touch. Um, love to hear from you. And uh, it's always an absolute uh, joy for me listening to new music anyway. Uh, I love love hearing new music and I love being turned on to new artists um, and being able to just support them. Yeah, I think it's always great when the person that starts a company related to music is also a music lover because you know, they're going to have a special appreciation for what the artists are doing. So is there anything we didn't cover um, in relation to Toon River or anything you want to tell potential artists? 
Mm, no, I think that's that's pretty good. That's good job. That's the goal. Well awesome. Teamwork making the dream work. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Leo. This has been fantastic. I know that when artists hear this, they're going to be super excited to get involved. So again, you guys go to uh, tuneriver.com to check it out. Email leo at tuneriver.com and use the promo code nobility. So he knows you came from this podcast. And um, I'm just so glad that Leo reached out to me to tell me about his service and what he's doing for artists. I'm just super happy that you are creating another income stream. That's what we're all about here on this show. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at RondiFay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.